same on number 10. Beautiful. Beautiful, smack. Hit. Oh, look at that. Nice. Huh? Got him. On plate. 10 o'clock, two inches in. That's in the left top corner. G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I've got another contender in our little 22 long rifle series. Um, with this we put it through the little PRS and mini ELR course as we've done before and I'll get into that in the video. Uh, but first of all I want to go through the rifle and then we'll go through a set up with it and then we'll go into the shooting side of it. Um, the rifle itself um, is um, a pretty strong contender I think in the way of things that you could use for PRS um, or for the ELR or for um, precision shooting in its basic concept. Being uh, it's a threaded barrel, 20 inch barrel, decent heavy profile, not too heavy but it is a reasonable heavy, um, nice and heavy down at the knock here um, in a good strong action. Um, and I suppose the big feature about this little ticker in the T1X is that the footprint on its little receiver is exactly the same as a T3 or a short action T3. Which means, and the really nice feature of these, is that if you have a chassis, uh, a good stock, a competition stock, all that sort of stuff, this little receiver is going to be able, for, for a T3, a ticker T3, this little receiver is going to be able to bolt straight into it. So it means upgrading chassis and that type of thing is a really straightforward path in this, in this option. Um, in that, um, and I would say, listen, the stock is, the, the combination of this whole rifle is really set up to be nice and accurate for a hunting configuration in what, I've, in what we have here. Um, being a little, um, it's a plastic or injection molded plastic um, stock, um, it, it is a bit sort of plasticky feeling um, and it is set up, like I said, in a hunting configuration. So made with um, a, the basics in the way of the, the um, butt stock here, the cheek rest position isn't perfect for doing any precision sort of stuff. Um, the whole stock is quite lightweight and is, in, in my feel of it, the low quality compared to the rest of what's here. Not saying it's terrible, in the way of for a hunting stock, really good. And the type of plastic it's made out is going to be very durable. Almost feels like you can drag it down a gravel road and it's going to come out looking the same at the end of it. So durable, it's got decent checking in places to make it grippable, that sort of stuff. But very much the, the, the type of thing that's going to be um, at home sitting on a sling on your back as you're, as you're tracking through the, the bush and the rain and all the rest of it. So good for that side of things, but really not that suited to doing this sort of shooting that we're doing here. But, as said, easily upgradable. Real quality features that go with this rifle, uh, which I really do like. Decent sort of weight barrel, not overly heavy, but it is a decent weight. It could be heavier, but I don't think you're going to gain much out of putting much more weight into this barrel. Decent heavy in the knock. It's threaded on the front here. It runs a little plastic um, thread protector on the front of it. Uh, but that's all pretty straight. I think that's the um, half inch by 18 thread. Um, same as what's on most of the 22. Same as what we found on the front of the little CZ. But um, quite a common thread at the front there. Um, the receiver side of it, um, really strong and rigid. Um, so great. Um, the bolt, there's a really short throw. So it's a really short throw on this bolt. Um, and really strong feeling, so really good there. Um, well, listen, I suppose the carrying on the overview run it came with it runs a little 10 round magazine. This nice little plastic 10 round magazine here um, in form and function work perfectly, absolutely no issues. Um, plastic, listen, step on it, you might be able to break it versus steel, but um, I don't even think so. I think it's nice, hard feeling plastic um, and worked pretty nicely, really easy to do. Um, <laughs> easy to find, put in, operate, worked really well. Um, plastic trigger guard, bits and pieces down the bottom here, um, which is for this sort of little hunting f um, configuration, awesome and worked really nicely. Um, the trigger is probably one of the nicest features to this rifle. It really feels like a proper um, full blown rifle trigger, um, if that's a way to say that at all. It's actually set at two pounds. I haven't messed with it at all. Um, I don't know if that's been messed with previously. From what I can gather, they come in somewhere around the three and a half to four pounds commonly, and you can adjust them down to one and a half pounds. But really a nice feeling trigger, not a trigger like a 22 long rifle trigger or a air rifle trigger or anything like that. Really a proper feeling trigger and, and shot, a nice firm feel to it, really nice. Um, the short action in the bolt, really nice. 
probably the only thing I would say, there's a yin and a yang that goes with that. Um, it's a decent little bolt knob, um, and it is like the tickers. You can do a bolt in here and take this off and put bigger bolts on here of the match the, um, and I don't know what ones, if, if any will go on. Now, I haven't checked that out, but certainly it's replaceable. I know there are some you can get for it, but that's quite simple. But really, it feels fine here. The only thing I would say, in wherever you go with a shorter throw, you um, after you've hit the trigger, I don't do that too much on a rimfire, but we'll do it here, um, you'll see that this lift now is really quite heavy. So it's probably the only thing I would say that um, it's a little bit the nature of when you're shortening the throw, you're trying to get more done on resetting the, the trigger spring or the, the firing pin string spring. You're doing more on actually resetting that to lift over a shorter radius. So your, your mechanical advantage isn't so good. So that was a little bit heavy. A longer bolt would, heavy, would, would make that better. Maybe in the long term, they maybe even lower the pre pressure of that spring. Really a not an issue in a hunting form, but a delicately set up rifle, there's a little bit of weight going into each time you actually lift after you fired the trigger. Um, so that's probably the only thing I found was a little bit firm. And I'd be interested to see, this is a new rifle, I'd be interested to see if that actually frees up a little bit once you run, you know, a thousand rounds through it or something like that. Uh, but listen, not really any concern in the way of accuracy, just in your resets and that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously, once going to a heavier chassis, if you were going down that road um, with more rigidity to it, then that would work. With that. that would then start to counteract that a little bit as well. But really, no problems with it. it was just a feature I noticed. Um, so listen, that's the basics of it. Really nice, and 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 the whole thing, even in this little stock felt just really nice and strong, felt quite rigid and really a nice feature about it. Um, the bits I would say, well I suppose the only thing I would say with doing it, the, the, without having a, a cheek rise or any form or without having this up where it would be a little bit nicer to get onto a proper size scope, um, it was a little bit more stiffness, a little bit more holding head in the right position to keep a good um, picture on the reticle. So there was a little bit of not quite so comfortable because of the stock, um, but still it performed well. So let's get into what I did to it, which is very little, but um, it came with this already, this little um, Picatinny rail adapter, which actually is slides onto the 11 millimeter dovetail on top of the receiver. So it came with that I'm already fitted. I think that was fitted prior to us um, as the way it came across the country. I think the, um, the rep actually fitted that up. Uh, but that's all it came to us with. Um, there is a, a few different ones. They actually slide on, like I said, and then bolt down. So nice and rigid, but converts it to a proper Picatinny rail. So to then put on a decent scope, I wanted to try and set it up to we could get good elevation. We're shooting out to 500 yards in this, this little scenario. So ideally I want to have around 80 minutes of elevation in the scope. Um, and being something like the ticker, I wanted to put a decent scope on it. And I also wanted to run a level up from just a Harris bipod. I tend to find that the, especially in a light rifle configuration, I much prefer um, the flexibility that you get out of th this little bit of rock for a little bit of feel, a little preload on, a, even in a 22 on a, um, that we get on the Harris bipod. I really wanted to get a Harris on the front of it, but I wanted to do that without modifying things. I'll put it down in this position so it's all flat and out of the road. I don't shoot like that by the way, but that's, I wanted to get it there. To do that, there's just this little adapter and I'll, I'll put a, a pic image on there so you can see that properly. But it simply has a little thread, threaded part that clips onto your swing still will start at the front. Um, and then a little plate goes on here and then you do up a nut which neatly has a nice little bit of rubber and a little convex bottom to it which grasps to the bottom of most stock quite nicely. And that gave us a little bit of a Picatinny rail um, and then we've still got a swing swivel, swivel stud at the front there for be able to put a sling onto if you wanted to. That gave us the option to put it on there with no modifications to the rifle, just attached on the front there, and that let us run the Atlas bipod. So it's really nice, you get a little bit nicer feel, they're softer feet, um, and that worked really nicely. So very happy on that side of things. Um, that was that bit. The other bit that we did was I wanted to put on a decent scope, like I said, um, to go with things. It's probably the bit in the way of especially trying to shoot at longer ranges, but even trying to hit the, qu the quarter inch target at 50 yards. 
is a lot easier with a little bit more power and good glass. So, on one of my rifles I have this scope here, which is the Night Force NSX um, in the, um, I think it's 6 to 22, um, in the 50 mil scope um, in second focal plane. So really great scope, I like it a lot, I've used it a lot, it actually runs on my 308. Um, and to get it on here, what I've used are these Burris um, adjustable rings. These are the ones that have the different angle shell cups um, that go inside the rings and I've put in t positive 20 and negative 20 which gave us a set of 40 mil rings. Now it's a zero ammo, ammo base, 40 mil rings and then this scope that normally gets it's got just over 100 minutes of internal elevation. In this combination here, ended up with about 95 minutes of internal elevation with a zero at 50 yards. So awesome, you know, really happy with it. Um, worked really nicely, and it definitely let us see the real potential for the rifle in the way of the scope. Like I said, a little bit limited by the stock, but let us do that. So that's basically it. Two pound trigger, um, set up with the Atlas bipod, with this Night Force NSX on the top of it, um, and then we went through and did this little shoot. Okay. Beautiful. Hold left edge. Same on number ten. Beautiful. Do you feel that wind pick up and just hold them to the left? Yeah. Um, next we're out to the 100 yard target where we're shooting that um, little dueling tree. That's a two and a half inch disc out there. Um, and once again, calling for the wind a little bit around there. But that was on and worked really nicely, shot really well. And that sort of distance, this thing performed really well. Got him. Hit him bottom edge, six o'clock. Got him, <laughs> and back again. <laughs> Hold left edge. Okay. Nicked him. <laughs> it was a nick. Yeah. Go down the next one. Radio. Same thing. Hold the tiny bit lower. Radio. Half an inch lower. Beautiful, right. smack. Beautiful. There we go. Okay, awesome. awesome. So that's probably the, the distances we do the PRS stuff at, and those are our couple of little uh, little um, things to sort of represent that, but little courses to watch it. Lots of fun to do, and really you can spend all day plinking at that sort of stuff. Um, really good, making sure you get your control properly, make sure you do things properly. Um, and I should say, there's, a, there's another point that I'd raise at this stage. We get the occasional question as to, um, or suggestion as to using different ammunition um, and being able to shoot with um, how some ammunition works better than others and why don't you do different things and all the rest of it. What I'm doing and staying with for this whole course is for all of the up to 250 yards is we're using the CCI standard velocity. Um, I'm not saying it's the best ammunition. It seems to work really well for, in our CZ. It seems to work really well in all these. But what we're really doing is standardising. We're making sure that everything is shooting the same thing. Can I shoot? Sure can. Oh, just off. <laughs> Yeah. For a doll, it was pretty freaking good, wasn't it? Yeah, man. Oh, just underneath. 
Five o'clock just underneath. Hit! Oh, look at that. Nice. Huh? <laughs> Three o'clock just in. Oh, dust just underneath. That looked like six o'clock. Got him. Oh, top. Top edge. 11.30, very top edge. Uh, made it wiggle. Can't see the impact. Oh, just over top. 12 o'clock. Got him! Uh, yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Just one inch left of centre. Okay. Here we go. I'll try that hold again. Oh, oh, left bottom corner. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go back to centre. This calmer wind, go back oh, to yeah. centre hold. Oh, left no, the wind's going the other way. Do the same shot. Beautiful, that's the top. You see that there? So hold, um, go again and hold right edge. Whoa, bounced into it, I think. I think, yeah, there was dust. Yeah, so centre again. Hit. And listen, rifle, we got on there really quickly from just dialing in, to you doing the maths and having a couple of points to shoot at. Um, I had to be able to dial in um, and that went on really easily. I only just missed it in the way of from, from a dial in, which um, I once again have put down to a little bit of luck. But good scope, accurate tracking um, and the, nice, the barrel in action working really nicely. As I got out in the longer ranges, a little bit less comfort. And I suppose there's another thing that I'd, I'd have to tell you there is because of the difference between me and Sam, um, I have a lot longer length of pull. It's not really the length of pull that matters to me. My shoulder to where my eye is, is too close. I would have this forward another solid inch, um, maybe a little bit more to be my real comfort position, but I'm doing that so I'm not making Sam um, stretch out to reach the scope. So I've got it to where it's a bit more comfortable for Sam. She's a tiny bit forward of her position, but it still works for her. Um, and I'm having to hold the rifle away from myself a little bit to be able to do this. So not ideal, and that means that I can't blame the stock completely, um, but that's a little bit of our little course and what we're doing. But it's the same for all rifles. So out there on there, hit it a fair few times. As you see, I've just put on some footage to go with that. Um, that was a lot of fun to do, starting to get more into, into my cup of tea, shooting longer distance. The wind was definitely erratic and all over the place. Um, we would get two or three shots and then it would be chasing and it would be chasing the other way, um, one way and then the other way. The flag helped a little bit, but um, fairly slow moving bullet going out there, all the mid-range winds and that sort of stuff affect them a lot. But once again, in proof to how accurate and how well the little rifle worked, and we still got on there and winged, um, I should say, of the plate we're talking, I'd say six inches, um, probably means a bit more looking in my hand. That's the little target we're shooting at, at 250 yards and out at the 510 yards where we'll set up again today. Ready. Bottom right, one target right, one target low. Left, half target left, half target low. Oh, just off bottom left corner, just off. Right and low. One half targets low, half target right. Got him! On plate. Ten o'clock, two inches in. That's in the left top corner. Yeah, okay. Right well, here. That's good. Yeah. On plate. 
That's it. That wind's getting a little bit hectic. I was having to chase it a long way out there, going out to 10. Yeah. So, yeah, but for a little, for what it is, um, you know, the little rifle's nice. The stock could do us some work. Okay. Um, so, out there at the 510 yards, um, fair old uh, bit of a job going on with trying to do that. Um, and I only put on the last few shots when, to when we got a hit. Uh, we'd been through two magazines of rounds prior to that, um, and that was largely working out the wind. Um, and once I got a grip on it, I um, mean, that last round, you'd see that I was shooting. What you didn't see was I was holding a little bit more and a little bit more. I'd got a read on what the wind was doing, and it was really blowing one way for a while and then blowing another way for a while. But that sort of sway of changing winds, I sort of got the grip on what was actually happening. And you can see what this group looked like. It was starting to settle in, getting closer and closer and closer and closer, um, and then bang, we got it. Because it had been such a chase, uh, 510 yards shooting at our six inch target, which obviously is only just over one MOA out there, um, and we're using the, the Velocita rounds, which we're using, and, and people, there's a lot of, um, people that would tell you that the bullets are dropping through the transonic zone um, so that you should shoot a subsonic all the way. Um, just too much elevation needed for these. We're at 130 minutes of elevation needed for a standard velocity. So these were back down at 80 minutes of elevation. So that's the first reason. Uh, the other negative is that there'd be a lot that suggest that the, um, the amount of power, the amount of pressure they're running there, you get a, a far broader um, extreme spread in your muzzle velocity. Um, I've never measured them, but I've always found there are some that are a bit erratic, but largely I've found them very consistent. And you'll see the proof in the pudding of that group, um, which we've sort of managed to replicate with different rifles and that side of things. Worked really well, but that's why we're using the Velocita um, just for the extra power. I think they're 1435, um, yeah, 1435 feet per second is their starting velocity. Um, you'll see out there, you can hear the little crack of the, of the bullet, of the sound getting there first. Uh, but we so obviously slow down a long way through the range. But, um, yeah, on there, hit. Pretty erratic day, hit our six inch target. Um, and we had, uh, to do that, we ended up with 30 rounds. Got some close hits in the early ones while I was figuring things out. But you'll see what that last little group looked like there. So very happy with that. Um, certainly could have done with, the, with a better setup in the way of the stock side of it. And I suppose that's where I'd leave where this rifle is. I think the barrel and action are awesome. And I think the trigger's awesome. Uh, magazine works really well. I'd get sort of two or three of them if I was going to do this a bit more with this rifle. Um, but for me, the stock would have to go. And maybe we'll, um, we'll talk to the guys, see if they've got something to be able to put it in there and run this one through again. But that's what I would be buying this for. As for a hunter, probably perfect. Really, really good rifle. Leave it alone. It's, it's just spot on. But for the PRS or the Mini ELR or the precision target shooting, doing that sort of stuff, then I, I wouldn't be working with this stock. I would be removing it and putting it in a proper chassis or a target stock or something else, something of your preference. Um, and then I think this barreled action, essentially, um, is awesome. Worked really nicely, really happy with it. Anyway, guys, um, let us know any thoughts to go with all that. Um, we had a lot of fun, as we do, and, and that's what I suppose what I'm, I'm also trying to put forward is, um, listen, get yourself 22 and try some of this stuff. They're great fun to do, super cheap. You can burn through 500 rounds in a day and um, you spend, you know, I don't know where the price is in your world, whether that's bloody $30 or that's $100. It's nothing in ammunition. The barrels almost don't wear out. Um, lots of fun, good practice, good training. Um, yeah, get out there and, and enjoy. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking in on us. I'll catch you next time. Hi, guys, Sam here. For folks that are interested in our products that you will have seen in our videos, these are all products that Mark has designed for our experience in ELR shooting. We manufacture them here ourselves. The likes of our adjustable bag bases, bag riders, bipod systems, muzzle brakes, shot data recording sets, and even our great fun little 22 long rifle target. These are all available in our web store, the links to which are below this video, along with our contact information. And guys, we work hard at putting these videos together, so we appreciate all the help we can get. For those of you who haven't subscribed, don't forget, 
and hit the bell so you get notifications of when our videos come out. It would be awesome to get some financial support. So for those of you who can, you can purchase support bits on our web store which help us bring these videos to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.